Trying to need a step up with a subversive subtext Trying to feed the need for more than just remedial subjects Place my faith in the belief that the general public Will open up their minds to more than just an industry puppet I ain't a preacher preaching doom and gloom Well not just shit, if there's something I feel strongly about Then I'll discuss it, and if I only make one album before I kick the bucket I'll hold that album to my heart in my grave and say fuck it Waiting for the beat to kick in, but it never does Waiting for my feet to grow wings, that lift me above All of these tiresome things, that we know and love Waiting for the beat to kick in, but it never does Waiting for the beat to kick in, but it never does Waiting for my feet to grow wings, that lift me above All of these tiresome things, that we know and love Waiting for the beat to kick in, but it never does A lot of my poems and writers seem to start with me waking up Or being in a dream or dreamlike state Now. This implies a certain level of abstraction in my work. You might say I'm keeping it surreal, but I'd rather you didn't. The fact is, I sleep a lot. It's as simple as that. <laughs> and I like sleeping, man. It's a nice place to be. Wait. I was walking along through unfamiliar streets and it felt strange because there didn't seem to be anyone else around. I don't know where I was, but it had the feel of New York, but not New York in real life, the New York you see in old films. I can't really explain why, it just had that vibe. Every step I took felt somehow more dramatic. So I kept walking and down an alley behind a bar, sitting on some metal steps, I saw a man. From the look and smell of him, it was clear he enjoyed a drink, but he wasn't in such a state I felt to be any kind of irrational threat, so I approached him with due care. Ah, Mr. Pip, he said out loud, we've been awaiting you. My name is Elwood P. Dowd. Now, just what he meant by we, I didn't really get. But all the same, I took a seat next to him on the step. He said, you'll meet a few people before this day is through who will administer advice and guidelines to you. Now, what each of us says, I'll tell you now is true. Whether or not you take the advice is for you to choose. At that point, he acted like someone had whispered in his ear, which, since no one else was there, was pretty damn weird. Awkwardly, I looked away and kind of played with my beard. He cleared his throat for a second and then said, listen here. In this life you can be oh so smart or oh so pleasant For years I was smart, I recommend pleasant Being smart can make you rich and bring respect and reverence But the rewards of being pleasant are far more incandescent With this information I was encouraged to walk on I continued alone through these empty streets Thinking over what Elwood had said But at the same time thinking about how fucking strange the day had been so far I was in my own little world when a hand was placed on my chest And a guy said, look out, there's some broken glass on the floor there I looked up he said, hi, pleased to meet you. My name is Lloyd Dobler. I'll get straight to the point. Won't take too much time from you. I'm probably the youngest person you'll get advice from today. And you may think a guy my age wouldn't have anything to say. But it's said that observation, that old age brings wisdom. And I observe every single life lesson I'm given. I won't attempt to tell you about how to love or be loved. Because you get a different genie each time that lantern is rubbed. But I will offer you advice on dealing with life. It's ups and it's downs, it's troubles and it's strife. Now I'm sure you've had times you felt down and angry. You wanted to lash out, punch your wall and be manly. But the question I pose now will offer you a plan B and maybe some peace and quiet for your friends and family. How hard is it to decide to be in a good mood and then just be in a good mood? That's all I have to say, it's a straight up fact. You control your emotions, it's as simple as that. He walked off then, leaving me to contemplate this brief encounter. I barely had time to realise I was being taught something before he was gone. And I was back on my way. On I walked, and almost immediately I spotted the next guy, and it couldn't be clearer. This guy was standing on the street corner, pacing back and forth. Skinny looking guy, leather jacket, tight jeans, retro look. I've rarely seen someone look quite so uncomfortably in their own skin, twitching, smoothing his hair back, kicking the floor, looking up and down the street. He clearly didn't enjoy waiting around, so I approached him quickly to put him out of his misery and to let him start his sh spiel. Hi, my name is Billy Brown. I ain't gonna give you some quote. Instead, I'm gonna use some stuff that you wrote. Always at the feeling I can never be the villain, cause the villain in the films is always back lit. Always at the feeling I can never be the villain, cause the villain in the films is always back lit. Now I find it pleasing to defend myself with reason, but this clock is always sitting on my back. Tick, tick, tick. Then, no explosion, but persistence brings erosion. Like a picture over overly exposed, and like a fox that's been run over in the road and road and. Basically, what I'm trying to say to you is you don't achieve anything by letting the past dwell within you. Getting all pent up and angry about stuff just eats away inside you. What's that other line of yours? If you can't 
forgive and forget. How's this? Forget forgiving and just accept them, that's it. See, that's how it's gotta be. Then you can fall in love, get on with your life and be free. Almost before he'd even finished that sentence, he was off down the street. Hands in his pockets, hurrying away. Now quite accepted of the totally surreal time I was having, I rounded the corner and continued on to my next encounter. Resigned to the fact this was some kind of dream or hallucination, I made my way through the now dark street to the one window that had a light on. I walked through the unlocked door, which incidentally had blinds down and a silhouetted figure like a film noir scene, but sadly no signs saying private eye. As I entered, a voice promptly said, This journey's almost over. I'm the only one left. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Walter Neff. The other guys have taught you things of great positive worth, but I'm afraid I'm here to bring you back down to earth. So you can live your life in control and be nice, but even that will not promise you a happy life. You may think yourself in general to be a nice guy, but I'm telling you now, that right there is a lie. Even the nicest of guys are some nasty with them. You don't have to be backlit to be the villain. Whether it be greed, lust, or just plain vindictiveness, there's a level of malevolence inside of it.